Hello Year 7, it's Mrs Reed, and this is our final lesson of this half term. We're up to lesson 20 and today's focus is of course our writing skills. I really enjoyed teaching you this term in our virtual classroom and I'm really really looking forward to when we can all go back and be together in our real classroom once again. But for the meantime I want to say a great big thank you to all of you because this week's star of the week is everyone. You've just all been so brilliant and I am really really proud of the work that you've put in. Learning at home or even when you're in support school isn't easy and it's not the same as having your teacher there live in the classroom. So a big thank you and a well done from me. You are all team awesome and I want you to keep up the great work. So let's make sure we're ready for that final lesson of the, this half term. As always, make sure you have paper or an exercise book. It's always better to write your work where possible so we can practice our handwriting. But if you don't have that ready, you can type your answers. Make sure you have a pen or pencil, something to write with. And you may wish to have a coloured pen or pencil for marking your answers too. When you're ready, let me know with a big thumbs up. Super, let's go. Today's first task is about correcting a piece of writing. I want you to put in the missing full stops and the capital letters. Now that sounds easier than it actually is. When you're doing a task like this, you're actually correcting run on sentences. So the first thing you need to know is what is a sentence? Well, a sentence is one complete idea. And we follow the rule in class that a sentence can name a person once and tell two things the person did. So each time we name a new person, we definitely need to start a new sentence. Let's read the paragraph together and then we can practice putting in some of the punctuation. OK. A boy took his mum to the cinema. He had a good time. The film was very funny. His mum bought a big box of popcorn. They made... They rode home on their bikes. Can you see here? that there's no punctuation to show me where the end of one sentence is and where the beginning of the next one starts. That means I need to be careful. And when I rewrite this paragraph out in my book, I need to make sure that all the full stops and all of the capital letters are accurate. Let's try the first one together. Looking at my sentence just here, What's the first thing that you can notice is missing? Three, two, one, say it out loud. A capital letter. So here I need to use a capital A. That would be correct. A boy took his mum to the cinema. He had, can you see here, look. A boy took his mum to the cinema is one complete idea. When I go on to this word, he, I'm actually introducing a new person. So I must use a full stop here. And what do I do to this word? Can you remember? That's right, I change it to a capital letter. Capital H for he. He had a good time. I don't want to go through this much more because I would like you to have a go at correcting it yourself. So now's the time to pause the video, rewrite this paragraph, put in all of the missing full stops and the capital letters. Do that now, please. Okay, 
Only carry on with this if you are now ready to mark your answers. Grab yourself a different colour pen and let's get marking. Oh dear, what am I doing? There we go. Okay, let's check our answers. So yours should look like this. It should say A, a capital A, so give yourself a tick. A boy took his mum to the cinema. How lovely. Now we need a full stop here, so give yourself a tick if you got that one. We need a capital H for he. Again, check it, tick it off. And if you've missed any of those things, now is the time for you to add them into your writing. And once you've done them, you can give yourself a tick. He had a good time. That's another complete idea. We have a full stop after time. So give yourself a tick if you got that one. Next up is a capital letter for the word the. The film was very funny. Tick that one if you got it right. The film was very funny. Full stop. Capital H. His mum bought a big box of popcorn. Full stop. Capital T. They rode home on their bikes. Full stop. OK, so I want you to have gone through and checked your work carefully. And if you've made any mistakes, that's OK. You just need to correct them before we move on. I'm going to count up the number of ticks here and then give myself a mark. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten ticks. So that means you can give yourself a mark out of ten, please. OK, good work. Let's move on. So our next um, act exercise here practices something that we've done for several lessons in a row now, and that is changing something from the present into the past tense. So I'm hoping at this point that you're getting really confident with this activity. And a bit like when we we're in class, you know that this one's coming. It's a bit predictable. You know, oh, Miss Reed's going to get us to do that task again. And that's because it's really important. When we're writing in English, quite often we do write to say what the person did. And we write it in the past tense. So it's an important skill. OK. Let's have a look at the sentences first. Sentence one says... They were wearing helmets. OK. Can you see that some of this sentence tells what the per person or um, people are doing now? That's shown in the words were wearing. Instead of saying that, we want to use an alternative word. So we need to check the words at the bottom of the page. Let's have a look. We've got the word sat, through, rubbed, wore, and cleaned. Can you point at the bottom of the screen and say which word should go in this sentence? They were wearing helmets. Point at the right word now. OK, now help me to say the sentence. To tell what the person did. I'm going to count you down for this. Are you ready? Three, two, one. They wore helmets. Well done. So I can replace this part of the sentence with the word war. That wasn't my neatest writing, was it now? I'm sure you can do better than me. Let's have a look at sentence two before you have a go on your own. Sentence two says, 
she was throwing the ball. Which part of a sentence do I want to change? That's right. I want to change the part that says was throwing. So I'm going to replace it with a verb that tells what the person did. Can you find it at the bottom of the screen? Once you see it, point at it. OK, so rather than saying was throwing, which word do I want to use? Through. OK, so I will say the sentence as it is now and you are going to then repeat back the sentence changed to say what the person did. She was throwing the ball. Ready? Three, two, one. She threw the ball. That's right. OK. I think you've done this task a few times now and you're getting really good at it. So show me what you can do. Pause the video and complete sentences one to six now, please. Don't forget to press play when you're ready and we'll go through together and mark our answers. OK, let's make a start. It's time to mark. So I've got a different colour pen here and I'm going to use it to mark my answers. So sentence one should say, they wore helmets. Give yourself a tick if you've got that one right. Sentence two, she threw the ball. Sentence three, they cleaned the room. Sentence four, the boys sat on the floor. Sentence five, he wore a new shirt. Sentence six, the clown rubbed his nose. A bit like this. Okay, so once again, you can give yourself a mark out of six. All right, really well done. So that's two bits of writing practice that you've completed so far. So I want you to check your time. If you haven't yet used your 45 minutes, I'm going to set you one more thing for you to have a go at. Today's extension task is again a piece of writing, just like you've done over the last few writing lessons. I've attached a worksheet on to show my homework for you to look at. The worksheet includes four pictures. I would like you to report on what happened in those pictures. Write a sentence that tells the main thing that each person or object in the picture did. When you've written your paragraph, which should be around four sentences, you can check back here and mark your answers. So make sure you stop the video, you go to show my homework and you open up the PDF sheet which shows you the writing activity. Can you do that now, please? All right, so if you found your way back to my video, I hope that's because you want to come and check your answers. We're going to check the answers to the short writing task that you did using the worksheet on Show My Homework. There are three checks today. Check one. I want to know that you started with a capital letter and you ended with a full stop. If you did, you can write your box, number one, and tick it off. You want to spend a few minutes though carefully checking your work before you do this. Check two. Check two says, does each sentence name a person and, or it might be an object actually, Name a person or an object and tell what they did. Remember that what they did is you writing it in the past tense. So check your sentences carefully before you give yourself a tick for check two. And finally, 
Did you use some of the words in the vocabulary box? Remember, we in like to try and use some of them in class. So, if you have used some of the words from the vocabulary box, give yourself a tick for check three. If you haven't, are there any that you could change? Could you choose a word and add it into your writing? Once you've done that, you can tick off box three. OK, Year 7, thank you for all your work this term. You have been super. And you know what to do next. I want to see a copy of your work, so please take a picture and upload it to show my homework. Or, if you need to, send it to me at my college email address. Hope you all have a super, super half term. And I'll see you all very soon. Bye!